This is the Battles Digital Monthly Recap. This is a Toyota Land Cruiser Prado and it's a super capable JDM off-roader. This is the second generation J90 variant and was made in three and five door configurations. All J90 models came with real-time 4x4 with a high-low selector as standard. The active vacation package, which you are looking at, was a dealer option that replaced the third row with a camping setup. With a diesel variant and multiple gasoline options, there is a Prado for everyone. This is an RWB Porsche 911, and it is a custom wide-bodied Porsche built by Nakai San. Essentially, RWB takes a perfectly good Porsche 911 and will cut it up for you into this track-ready race car. And quite literally, too, Nakai literally takes a body saw to these cars. If this particular car looks familiar to you, that's because it was turned into a Hot Wheels car. Personally, I've always been a fan of the RWB cars, but I know they make a lot of purists angry. What do you think? Let me know. This is the wildest Acura NSX I have ever seen, and for good reason too. Take a look at what's under the hood. The naturally aspirated V6 has been swapped for a supercharged K-Series. That particular kit is good for over 500 horsepower on E85. Mitigating that power inside is a hybrid racing shifter setup. Everything on this car is high quality name brand from the work wheels to the body kit all the way around. If I could have any NSX out there, I'd be picking this one. This is a wide body RE Amemia RX7. As far as RX7s and rotaries go, RE Amemia is like the holy grail. These cars are often dubbed King of the Toge in Japan, and this car is certainly battle prepped with 18 by 11 wheels all the way around. The car was built by Toge Techniques as well as Bridge Moto, who makes some of the best seats and steering wheels in the industry. Powering this beast under the hood is a 13B REW rotary engine producing over 400 horsepower. This car truly is a work of art. This is the wildest Honda Ridgeline I have ever seen. The guys over at Hoonigan worked with Honda Performance Development to make this the Indy truck. And as the name suggests, this thing is powered by a 900 horsepower capable turbocharged V6 engine from an Indy car. It's got inboard suspension, the brakes from an Acura NSX, and a custom wide body where everything is carbon fiber and fiberglass. The best part is it's actually driven, making this thing a certified tire shredding machine. This is a Nissan Skyline R33 GTR, and here's what makes this one special. This particular car is a V-Spec model, which means it came with Brembo brakes and slightly bigger wheels for more performance advantages over the standard model. Matter of fact, the V-Spec models were very common amongst Group N endurance racers back in the day. And of course, it still has that iconic twin-turbo RB26 under the hood. Examples like this showcase why these things are true JDM icons. This is a highly modified FD RX7 and it's one of the cleanest examples in existence. Firstly, this car is swapped, but not with an LS, but rather a 1JZ under the hood producing almost 600 horsepower. Next, this car doesn't just have one body kit, it actually has kits from Ari Amemia, Feed, and Burnout. Inside, you'll find the engine management display and also custom upholstered carbon bucket seats. It seems like every time I post an RX-7 with an engine swap, all the rotary purists get mad, but you gotta admit, it's pretty cool. This is a TVR Speed 12 Turbo, and it's one of the craziest cars ever made. A bunch of ex-TVR engineers got together with original blueprints and parts from the Speed 12 to recreate it completely from scratch. What they ended up with is this carbon fiber bodied 1000 horsepower twin turbo V12 hypercar. For years, the one-off Speed 12 was only available in video games. And now it's crazy to think that you can actually go out and buy one brand new. This is a Jay's Racing wide body S2000 and it's a full blown Honda race car. Every nut and bolt has been turned on this car, and all stock components have been replaced with genuine high-quality aftermarket parts. Under the hood lies a turbocharged F-Series engine making 600 horsepower. Inside, you'll find a custom roll cage and a completely stripped interior. Out of all the S2000s I've ever seen, this one is one of my all-time favorites. 
This is a Lotus 7. It's essentially a race car you can drive on the road. And yes, this is a legitimate Lotus. Take a look at the plaque on the firewall. The Lotus 7 is still produced by Caterham as the Caterham 7 to this day. The original engine has been replaced with one out of a Mazda Miata, which is a very common swap. As with most race cars, the interior on the 7 is very bare bones. However, due to its lack of pretty much everything, this thing only weighs 1,100 pounds. I've wanted one of these things since I was a kid, but let me know what you think about it. This is a Nissan Silvia S13, and it's been brought over from Russia to the United States. The owner, Artem, swapped over a 13B rotary engine from a Mazda. It has a very unique meaty stance to it, and take a look at the paint. It's this dark candy red. Artem even stripped the car down to its bare shell and painted the interior as well. This S13 is one of the cleanest examples out there and really goes to show just how far you can take these cars. This is not an AutoZam AZ1. This is actually a Suzuki Cara. While the Cara is pretty much the exact same car as the AutoZam AZ1, there were only just over 500 Caras produced in total over a two-year period. Inside of the Cara, you'll find a two-tone red on blue color scheme with the seats, a five-speed manual transmission, and a 660cc turbocharged engine, and of course, the iconic gullwing doors. This is a JDM BMW 318iS, and you might be thinking to yourself, isn't BMW a European car brand? Well, yes, they are, but take a look at the inside. It's right-hand drive and comes with all Japanese warning labels to make it road legal for use in Japan. The color on this car is Japan Rot, and it is possibly the only one in the United States of its kind. JDM versions of European cars are special, and this one is no exception. This is a wildly modified Mercedes 300D, and it's a diesel-powered Mercedes from 1976. The owner, Dalton, went through absolutely everything on this car, both outside and inside. This car has a perfectly upholstered peanut butter brown interior, airlift performance air suspension with 3P management and custom hard lines, and a paint match 5-cylinder diesel engine making 79 horsepower. This is no ordinary Mitsubishi Evo. Matter of fact, here's a pro tip. If you ever see one of these things on the street with drag radials on all four corners, a huge turbo peeking at you through the grill, and a parachute hanging onto the back, you're probably not going to win that race. The owner of this Evo, Cameron, took his car and cranked it up to 11 in every aspect. Inside the cabin, you'll find a roll cage, and under the hood, you have a 1,000-plus horsepower 4G63 engine. Let me know if you think you could line up next to this thing on the street. This is a Honda S660, and it's Honda's modern-day interpretation of their original Honda Beat. The S660 is in a class of cars in Japan called K-Cars, and they're met with some restrictions. The largest two restrictions have to do with overall dimensions and engine displacement. The S660 is just over 11 feet long and weighs just over 1,800 pounds. Under the hood, you'll find a turbocharged three-cylinder 660cc engine making 64 horsepower. Both of those figures are the upper limit of the K-Car class. Inside, the S660 feels very modern with a nicely upholstered interior, a six-speed manual transmission, though a CVT was offered, and an 8,000 RPM redline. If you enjoyed this video on this car and would like to see it for yourself, head on over to the Lane Motor Museum in Nashville, Tennessee. They have this in their OK exhibit until next year. This is the Volkswagen Quantum, and it's the U.S. spec version of the second-generation Passat. The Quantum is based on the Audi 80 platform and came as a three-door coupe, a four-door sedan, or the four-door wagon as seen here. Inside, you'll find factory-fitted Recaro seats. And while many engine variants were offered over the years, this one is a GL5 and comes with Audi's five-cylinder engine, which sounds fantastic. It's one of my all-time favorite Volkswagens. This is a Mitsubishi Pajero Evo, and it's a homologated street version of their off-road rally car. Mitsubishi was required to manufacture a certain amount of street vehicles in order to compete in the Dakar Rally. The end result was about 2,500 or so street legal race cars. They were available with either automatic or manual transmissions. 
Lastly, all Evos were fitted with four-wheel drive and a 275 horsepower V6 sitting under the hood. This is a lifted twin turbo V6 Mustang. Yes, you heard me correctly. Take a look at what's sticking out of the hood. That's a pair of turbochargers making this thing look like a Wish.com unicorn. The car goes by the nickname Policia and it's a Gambler 500 style build. It's running a 6 inch lift kit and 32 inch off-roading tires. This thing's rocking Holly EFI and has a touch screen mounted in the dash. Gotta say after riding in this thing all day, it handles the trails like an absolute beast. This is an Infiniti M30 and it's the American version of the JDM Nissan Leopard. The M30 competed with Acura's Legend and BMW's 3 Series but at a lower price point. These were super luxurious with automatic climate control and Bose speakers as standard. They even came with leather interior. Infiniti used a left-hand drive version dash of the R31 Skyline. No manual was offered and power came from a VG30E under the hood making for 0 to 60 in 9.5 seconds. This is a Volkswagen XL1 and it's the most fuel efficient car in the world. Volkswagen was able to achieve a whopping 240 miles per gallon with the XL1 and here's how they did it. Firstly, this is the most aerodynamic production car in the world. Every piece of bodywork is sculpted to have air move around it as efficiently as possible. Volkswagen even went so far as to replace the mirrors with cameras and screens in the doors. Second, the XL1 is incredibly light due to its complete carbon fiber monocoque construction. Lastly, this car is a diesel-electric hybrid. Combined, the 1 liter diesel engine and the electric motor make 68 horsepower. The passenger compartment is pretty narrow due to its teardrop shape, so the passenger seat is slightly offset. This car has Garmin GPS, a bespoke gauge cluster, and a 7-speed automatic transmission. If you enjoyed learning about the XL1 and want to learn more, go check it out. It's on display in Nashville, Tennessee at the Lane Motor Museum. This is a Daihatsu Opti Classic, and while the bodywork might look like it's an older classic car, this is actually a K car from the 90s. Back in the late 80s, early 90s, some Japanese car makers started offering classic designs of their modern K cars. Most classic interiors featured a cream or white color scheme. This particular Opti Classic is a two-door model with a five-speed manual transmission and a 660cc engine under the hood, making 42 horsepower. Not fast, but very cute. This is a Ford Fusion. No, wait, it's a Chevy S10. Well, actually, it's both. Welcome to the Silver Mullet. The owner of the car, Austin, built this as a Gambler 500 car. It features the bed from an S10, a PVC snorkel intake, and a traffic cone for a headlight. And that bed is 100% usable. Inside you'll find all kinds of screens and displays and radios, and it's also a factory manual car. It's got a stock 2.3 liter 4 cylinder making for 0 to 60 in 10 seconds on any terrain. Check out everything you can find on a Japanese fire truck. You've got your hoses, they're connected to the pump back here in the back of the bed. You've also got two fold down seats on either side, all of your nozzles over here, as well as slide outs on both sides. It's got areas for lights to go, but they have to be removed for importation to the U.S. Inside, you'll find this one's a manual transmission. You've got a radio and a cassette. That was totally optional. And what's ironic is it has not just one ashtray, but two. Well, hold on just a second. Let me put this back. Two ashtrays, one in the front, one in the rear, and they're used. If you like the video, give us a follow. This is a JDM Toyota Supra, and it's an A70 third generation from Japan. The third generation Supra introduced Toyota's electronically modulated suspension system, giving active dampening to the car. What's cool about this one, along with the wheels and body kit, you can see here it's right-hand drive. This is a true JDM model. That means it didn't come with a 1JZ, but rather a twin-turbocharged 1G GTE under the hood. This is a Chevy C4 Corvette, and it's one of the raddest examples of its platform. One of the most unique design features of this car has to be the stripes. The design of the stripes was actually pulled from an original Honda brochure and given custom jazz colors from the 90s. Other tasteful mods include rotiform aero discs, 
clear tail lights, and an air suspension setup. It's also worth mentioning that this is a Greenwood Edition Corvette, so it's got the body kit to go with it as well. I'd even go as far to say this is my favorite C4 out there. This is not your grandpa's Cadillac. Matter of fact, it's very far from it. If the totally slick tires and the drag racing wing on the back didn't give anything away, there's more than meets the eye with this. Just take a quick glance at the interior. Now you really know something's going on, so what is it with this thing? It's packing a boosted race motor with over a thousand horsepower, and the turbos are completely hidden under the car. Safe to say, this thing wins races.